Hello, my name is Ed Boyden, and this is course N146, module three. In this module, we look at uh, what it takes to install an operating system. There's many different kinds of operating systems. The, most people know of Windows, have heard of uh, Mac OS, and uh, possibly have heard of Unix distributions or Linux distributions. For this module, you have a, um, a section that says steps to install an operating system and post install configuration. Now, we're not looking for you to do this on the PC that you're building. You still have several steps in building that unit. But what we have done is given you an opportunity here to use VirtualBox, um, and I'm going to demonstrate this, how you can use VirtualBox to install an operating system in a virtual machine. In other words, to create a machine that's actually just a set of files on your computer and to use the computer as a uh, the current operating system, whether it be Windows, Mac OS, or Linux distribution, as kind of a um, master operating system or master control program, and to run other operating systems in Windows on virtual machines. So. The first thing you need to do is to install VirtualBox. This is what it looks like when it's running. It's a fairly simple program to install. Um, what I did is I went to virtualbox.org. Let me show you that. Okay. And you'll see here it's an Oracle website. It's free to download. You can go to Downloads. In my case, I've got OS X or the Mac OS. Here's the Windows distribution. Here's a Solaris distribution or a Linux distribution. This is the host that you're going to run VirtualBox on to put other operating systems in VirtualBox containers, if you want to call them that. It's a fairly simple thing to do. You click on there and just tell it to go ahead and do the download. I've already done this. You know, it takes a few seconds. Um, I've got VirtualBox in a folder here. I've got a couple different versions of it. And um, it's fairly simple to install. So all you do is just basically open up this file and follow the install procedure. I've given you a link um, in the page that directed you here on how to do an install uh, a Linux on VirtualBox. So essentially, you know, this is what you should end up with, right? Just download it, install it, right? And then start building a virtual machine. Now that, that's what I'm going to demonstrate is how to build the virtual machine. There's other um, videos on my uh, YouTube channel uh, that you've been directed to where this video is at. There's one in there on how to install VirtualBox and how to create virtual machines. And I used a uh, BSD implementation um, for that example. And I'll show you what the difference is here. Right, That showed you how to do the download, how to, in, how to do VirtualBox install on Windows and on, on Mac OS. And now what we're going to do is build a virtual machine specifically for this Linux distribution. It's fairly simple. Click New. You can name your machine. I'm just going to call it. Um, that was simple, right? 64. It knows it's a Linux distribution. I down. I'm going to. I downloaded the 64-bit implementation. I'm going to say Continue. Here, I'm going to go ahead and and give this machine two gigabytes of memory. Um, I've got eight gigabytes on my host, as you can see here, so I'm giving it a quarter of my memory to use as a virtual machine. And I'm going to follow the instructions, right? I'm going to create a virtual hard drive. And in this case, um, I'm creating the virtual hard drive, and I'm going to make it eight gigabytes. That's the recommendation. Actually, I believe these instructions say that when you create the disk drive, you want to... Um, Create it with a 10 gigabytes. What we mean here by dynamically allocated 
is the concept of thin provisioning. In other words, the virtual machine will only consume the physical space on your desk that it requires to exist on the desk, you know, just the size of that file. So if I give it 10 gigabytes, but it only uses three and a half to make the image, it will only consume three and a half gigabytes of space on the disk. I'll show you that concept in just a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I want it to be 10 gigabytes. That's what these instructions say is a good idea right here. Right? And it's created the drive. Right? So the other instructions here um, are fairly, fairly simple. Um, we're done. Right? I, I just followed essentially what it said to do here. So I've got um, my name for my operating system on here. I've got two gigabytes of memory. My boot order is floppy CD-ROM hard drive. Right? I want it to boot from the CD-ROM. You can go in here and change these parameters just like you would on your PC, right? Because that's essentially what this is, is an Intel PC. This is being a little bit slow because it's recording on the same machine that I'm writing on. Right? So I really don't need this floppy designation, so I can unclick that. Right? I don't have a floppy drive on my, um, on my computer at all. And not being very responsive. There we go. And click OK. Um, I've got 12 megabytes of memory for my display, it says. Um, and then I don't have any media loaded for my DVD. But here is the disk drive that I built, and it put it on a SATA controller. And then for my network, what I want to do is I want to um, I want to use my Ethernet port and I want to run it as a bridged port. <clears throat> You'll see this run a lot faster without doing the recording. Right? I do not want NAT. I actually want to use bridged mode because I want my DHCP server on my network to give me the address. I want this to be a standalone machine when it's running and not be dependent upon um, my computer to serve out the services. This way I can connect to a network printer. Um, I can go right on the internet. I can actually have relationships between the computers as individual computers. That'll be important later when you learn about a server environment. All right, now the next thing I need to do for the instructions is I need to make sure that I mount the ISO image I downloaded, right? The image of the, the DVD, basically, right? So you hit storage. Um, see where it says empty? Click on that, because that's the DVD on the IDE controller. And then using this little CD image, right? we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to choose the virtual disk and that virtual disk is the ISO image I downloaded. Right. So now it's loaded on there. It'll show it. There it is. So at this point I basically can hit the start button, right? I've got a computer with a disk drive and a CPU and a network and a graphics card. It's all virtual, right? It's all in the memory of my computer, right? And I'm going to hit the power button right here. It says start. And what this will do is it'll go out to the CD-ROM, look to see if it can boot from it. It can, right? The virtual machine will boot from that and it'll start the install process. This process would be the same whether it be Mac OS or Windows 7 or Windows XP, whatever you would um, create a, um, a new virtual machine for each one, right? Then you would um, define what type of system it was. Right? You know, it was Windows or 64 bits, whatever, give it a name. And then um, set up how big you want the boot drive to be. If you wanted to, you could set up even additional disk drives. There's um, one lab I do, it's for a thing called FreeNAS, and we build a, a, a unified storage system and create, you know, RAID sets on the, um, the computer. So I use my computer as a lab 
uh, for testing things out, for trying things, um, more of kind of a sandbox and learning environment for me. So that way I don't have to, you know, go consume whole computers in places. I, I can build a virtual data center on my, on my laptop. So when VirtualBox is running the virtual machine, you can see there's a, there's a, um, a SATA drive that's shown here, right? It's showing here the DVD drive that we've got the uh, ISO media mounted on. This is uh, for any kind of USB devices that are currently connected. That's my bridge adapter. I don't have any shared folders right now. This is just showing that my Intel processor is using the uh, virtual technology. This is an indicator that I have a mouse and whether or not I can use the mouse at that time. The, um, the mouse will get captured by the virtual machine sometimes. You have to be able to escape out of it. And that character for escaping is using my, the left uh, command key. So here it comes. She's starting up on us here. We can go look and see this um, this virtual machine actually being built. If I go to my directory and I look at the VirtualBox virtual machines, right, here it is right here. This is the disk image for that virtual machine. And uh, right now it's 45 kilobytes, right? So it's, it's very, very small right now. As we build the machine, it'll get much larger. I'll leave that there so you can see that. Oh, there we go. Yes, I want to install, right? I'm going to do an English install. And as the install starts to run, you're going to see this size here start to increase. Now, I'm not going to do the updates right now, not here. I'll show you how those are done after the installs done. It'll be pretty familiar if you've done Windows installs before. Yep, we're going to erase the disk. We're going to use that 10 gigabyte virtual drive. It's actually here. It's only 45 kilobytes right now. But like I said, as it consumes the space, it grows because it's just simply a file. So now it's creating partitions, and you can see the virtual machine itself is starting to grow in size, that virtual disk image. Yep, we're in the New York area here. And we're using a, um, an English keyboard and it's a Macintosh layout. Me, I'm Ed. I'm going to use eVoid as a username. Weak password. Let me try a good one. There we go. The match. Now continue. This is a multitasking operating system. So while it's doing the install, it's it's also asking me questions. As you notice, the file continues to grow over there. Ubuntu is, um, this is the 12.04 uh, um, long-term support version. In other words, the more stable <laughs> of the versions that are out there. It's not as cutting edge. There's, you know, some things that may not be in there that are in the, the more advanced versions. Um, for typical use, I mean, th this is actually usable 
um, for an operating system if you don't want to go out and pay for Windows. You know, you, maybe you have an old laptop that you want to make use of again, but you don't want to buy a license for it, right? Because maybe you transferred the license or it's got an old Windows XP version on it that's, you know, Windows NT or something that's not supported anymore. You can install this Linux distribution on there and play games and it's got, you know, by, by default, it has a, a word processor, a um, presentation software, and a spreadsheet program on it, as well as, you know, it comes with um, Firefox already installed. And, uh, and I'll show you that. Um, it has printer drivers in it, so if you got a printer on your network or connected to USB or whatever, it'll see it and, and uh, let you use it. I'll show you that. Okay. So now we're at 3.4 gigabytes for our disk image, and it's asking me to complete the installation process by restarting the computer. All right, so now we can uh, remove the DVD. It's already empty. It's been removed. And then we can hit enter to keep going and it'll reboot. Okay, now we have um, the system up and running. It's uh, asking me for the password that I gave it earlier during the installation process. As you can see, the machine is 3.42 gigabytes in size. And we should get our desktop now. At the top here, we can see our volume for our speaker, the time, the user that's logged in. Um, the status of my battery is charging on my laptop. Over here, this would be the um, settings, right? Uh, same as what you find over here, which would be the settings. And uh, so I'll give you a little tour here, right? So this is called Workspaces, and it'll give you um, four spaces in which you can start things in, right? So what we'll do is we'll take this space here, and we'll start Firefox. Just one click and it'll bring up Firefox for the first time. Right? And we'll bring up Writer, which is the same, basically the same thing as Word. Looks fairly familiar, right? Go back to workspaces. You can see I've got you know, the software center and the writer open in here. And then I've also got the uh, Mozilla running here. <clears throat> we'll pick another space and I'll, uh, I'll open up the system settings. Here's trash. So there's your control panel. You see your appearance, your keyboard, language support, um, set up your Bluetooth, your display, your keyboard, your mouse clicks, set up your printing, that kind of thing. Right? Do a backup. And again, here's workspaces. We'll open up our folder, our home folder. Where we have all our documents. So if we went to our workspace, we 
connection into our typing program, our Word program. If I did a save as, it looks familiar, doesn't it? It's just like looking at Word. I can save it to where my documents are, and I can give it a name. First file, we'll call it. We can change the format if we want. If you need to be compatible with Microsoft, there's also um, Microsoft Word. You can do a dot doc or a docx, right? Type thing. So we'll make it a docx. We'll save it. ODF is um, open document format. It's, so you can use any open office program on a Linux machine or Windows or um, a Macintosh. Just want to go to settings and see if we can find the tenant. So we'll add a printer. I'm going to use a network printer because my printer is on the network. And it just found my office jet. So I'll select it. Again, this is going slow because of the screen capture. <coughs> Forward, next, means the same thing. I do have a duplexer. It flips the paper over for me. It sees that that printer does that. Next. Looks good to me. Apply. We'll do a test page. That's pretty much it. It's gone off and it's printing a test page now. One of the other exercises you're going to have later on, you can leave this virtual machine put together, right? Is it's going to talk, the exercise is going to talk about uh, networking. And this is your network control panel. Obviously, the network's working because it's talking to my printer. But you can see, you know, we've got a MAC address that's been assigned to the virtual machine, right? And then it's IP address that was signed by the DHCP server. That server is running on this router, right? And it's going to get its domain name services from that same router. And here's a subnet mask.
this is where you would set your IP address manually if you didn't want to do automatically. Then all settings will show you your, um, your control panels. So that gives you kind of an idea of what um, the settings area looks like. It should seem familiar if you've been doing some administration. This, this um, little thing here is telling me I've got 95 updates to do. That's because it's a fresh installation. Right? So you can go back. This is the update manager that we had running. And it's showing me that I have 95 updates to do. So that's all you would do is click this install button here. And it would go through and it would download all those updates, just like it would do on Windows or on a Macintosh, and um, get it all up to date. I'm not going to do those right now. <coughs> Let's go back to Spaces. And here's my home directory, right? We had opened this folder up earlier, and uh, you can see you got a public folder where you can do shares, there's templates, you can keep your videos, your music, your pictures, your documents. Remember, we saved a document in here. It was our first um, document, right? First file. We made it a Word document. That should look fairly familiar. Um, I still have um, writer running, so what I can do is I can quit that and go over here and see what this is. Well, this is the software center. This would be like the app store. You can pick up different kinds of um, Software products, you know, pay for them, or it's in some cases they're free. And the last thing we had here was our browser. Right, we do a Google search area. So that's a tour. As you can see, we have a fully functional um, version of Linux running here in a virtual machine, and you can do your exercises. To shut down this machine, <coughs> over here in the settings area, right, you can um, just hit a shut down, or you can lock the screen, or you can log out. You know, I'm going to do a shutdown. Nope, just want to shut down. I don't want to restart. And um, you'll see the virtual machine will shut down, and it'll just be a file on my computer. Other virtual machines, you can uh, do a new, and I'll show you <coughs> that um, we'll just call it test, right? You can build Windows machines, Linux machines, Solaris, BSD, <coughs> OS2, Macintosh, or even custom build machines. These are kind of templates already, right? So for Windows, it's, it's got templates already for Windows 3, 95, 98, ME, NT, all the way up through Windows 8 and uh, 2012. So you can run just about any version of Windows that you want to on one of these machines. For the Mac OS, <coughs> it's just, you know, OS or 64-bit, pick one. For Solaris, there's Solaris 10 and 11. Of course, you have to have the, um, the non-Spark version to run on here. And then for Linux, you know, there's a variety of Linux distributions out there. Ubuntu, Turbo Linux, I used to like that a lot. It was pretty fast. Um, Oracle has a version. There's Fedora, SUSE. Debian, you know, and then um, there's Red Hat. Here's Red Hat right here. So 
So if there's a Virgin Linux you want to get to know, because you know you're you're looking for a job and <clears throat> that's what that particular shop uses, this is a great way to set up a little you know test box where you can learn how to do the installs and configure the networks and install the updates and you know all those kinds of things you do um, to do system administration. You can also install applications on top of these machines. They're actual computers, right? How do you, how do you get the uh, the CD installed? Well, at this point, this machine has a CD, right? Now, let's go back. I don't want to do this one. Let's just quit that one, right? You can see it has a CD, right? So <coughs> this um, Ubuntu that was running, right? Um, I can just stick a CD in my machine and it'll mount it, right? So you can install things, download them through the internet, whatever. Go to that app store. Um, and, and look. What I want you to do is to go through on your machine, install VirtualBox, and then install the, um, the Ubuntu uh, Linux, the 64-bit version, uh, like I did. You'll notice it runs a lot faster on your machine without all the screen capture stuff going on. Um, worst thing that happens is if that machine is like goofed up and you can't get it to work right, go over here and say remove. If you like that machine as a baseline, you can go ahead and clone it so that you can use it as a template and recreate it over and over and over again. Right? But um, right now I'm just going to go ahead and remove it right? and delete all of its files. And you'll notice, oh, it went away. So, you know, it just proves again the machine is nothing but a file. That's great.